Well, here we are back in our video review series, my good friend, Aaron Cavagnola. Welcome back, Aaron. Yeah, fun to be here, Zach. Yeah, so we've been doing a few of these lately and we just look at videos of people rowing and kind of share some feedback about things that they're doing. This is one of the videos from our class four schools and this is an iconic rapid where people have to either push or pull or downstream ferry this move. But I think what makes it tricky are these entrances. Like, you know, people Zach, maybe didn't scout this part. Zach, can you back up a second and, and stop yeah. for a second? You, you said push, pull, or downstream ferry. What do you mean by yeah. downstream? You, like, what do you, what do you, yeah, what do you mean? For me, downstream ferrying is turn to, turning the boat, like from what he's at, 180 degrees the opposite way and pulling downstream. So you're, the butt of your boat, the stern of your boat's pointing, yeah. Okay. Downstream. Down, downstream, yeah. And the point here would be to break through big laterals and make an aggressive move to the right. So you'd, you'd turn it around, pull it downstream through those laterals, and then catch that eddy. But nobody in this video, if I remember right, nobody did it. Look, he just let a little, do you see that? He just let a little branch free. Hold on, let me go back. Right behind him, yeah, a little yeah, branch yeah. popped up. I just, I've never noticed that. So this is, we did this rapid twice in the school and this is their first time through. A lot of these uh, were not great runs, but they're instructive for sure. And so the idea here is to catch the eddy on the right. And so they're pushing through these laterals right now to go into the eddy. That's a pretty, that awesome. at that point, he, he would have made the eddy if he hadn't turned around. Yeah, and then he made sure to pull, pull his nose off the wall. So he said he wasn't going to get rid of the wall. That's, that was a nice conservative move. Yeah. So we tell everybody here, you know, if you're not making it, turn your boat to the wall and pull off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Try to push it, but if you're not making it, you make a mistake, just point your bow at that wall and just pull, pull, pull and get away from it. I think cataracts are almost trickier to navigate. I think they're more forgiving in terms of flipping over and whatnot, but actually navigating through rapids and then the way they move and the way they pivot, I find them more challenging. I, why? I think they're easier. Um, because like, like you can't turn on the top of a wave. When you're on the top of the wave, it's a it's oh the, yeah. You know, the, the, the cat's like down inside it more, and then if you get, you know, you get like one tube and slower water, and then faster water, all of a sudden you're spinning around, and it just it just pivots, and it's like, yeah, I think I think they're actually more. Like I said, I think they're more challenging in certain ways to drive, and you get thrown around a little more. Like he has a he, you know, he didn't have as good line as a wrap. And I think part of it is like, I think that boat is it's a little harder to do that move. I think when as the features get bigger, the cat definitely has an advantage. So right he's here, he's pushing he, hard right now. Doing great. He and he, so he got turned off angle a little bit there. He's pushing. If he keeps that angle and keeps pushing, he's in the eddy, no problem. He just loses his angle and then realizes he's not making it. But turns. I think part of the reason he lost the angle though is because his right tube hit that that breaking part of the wave and his left tube was in that faster current. It just pushed him on out. Yeah. And then with the wrap, you're not your boat doesn't quite spin. You know, it's much like I said, it's much easier to get spun out with that path. I see what you're saying. Like it's, yeah. it doesn't keep, maybe it doesn't keep its angle as well. Like yeah, it's easier yeah. for when you're going in there, you got to mm -hmm. really fight hard to keep your angle where a raft will stay, be, stay on its line easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a little 11 foot wing cat. This thing's a little play toy and it, it takes a lot of work to keep it straight too. It's nice to use that little wave to push them across to the right there. Mm -hmm. So it looks like he's setting up to pull this move. Yeah, and that, it, that's going to be, and that's good. Luckily, it's what's light, but he's getting, you know, he's getting, um, yeah. His, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. The tracking of his boat was taking him left there, and so he's having to work a lot harder to get back. But once he starts to go, it works well for him. Yeah, and what I think works really well here is he starts on the left and just slowly tries to build left to right momentum and just keeps fixing his angle. And he does a pretty good job, he doesn't hit the wall. Just keeps rowing, pulling, pulling, pulling. It's a very conservative way to run the rapid. I think, yeah, he definitely is working against the tracking of the boat. And I'm not sure if people understand what I mean by tracking. Like, whatever direction you point the boat, it wants to go because there's less resistance on the front versus the side of the boat. So, for example, this boat is pointing towards the right, so all those waves hit the left tube of it and want to push it back to the right. And so, in small water like this, and the boat's light, you can pull against that and pull back across with that upstream ferry. But as the hydraulics get features get bigger, it gets more challenging to work against the tracking of the raft, and particularly with a heavier boat. 
and the track. So you're saying the track and the rock when you the way you point it. If, if you, you point, point it a certain way, it. it's really hard to not go that way. Yeah. Like right, yeah, right now he's kind of using the tracking to, tr to help him go to the right. Or she is. I'm gonna pause right. it. He so he's trying to again. Spot. We're trying to push into this into this uh, eddy right there on the right. They're trying to push into it, and it's hard. And you probably should be five feet to the right by now to but really then, make it. And he's going to do better, but this is, the, this is the spot where the cat had problems, where if you look at his boat, just to the left is where you can see that glassy water, and that, that cat's left tube was in that glassy water, and the right tube was hitting this wave that's slowing it down, and that's what spun that cat. And so and the raft is, you know, hits it all together, so it's not quite the, the big problem. And again, I love, like, we drill this in everybody. If you're not making it, turn your boat into the way into that wall because you don't want to hit the wall sideways and start pulling off and it came out came nice there's a nice pillow on most walls like that too right so if you mm -hmm. point towards it the rock and joint to hit the wall because that pillow will kind of keep you off of it. this is great footage there. yeah i i really enjoy flying the drone it's really interesting to be watching them as i'm flying the drone so that's pretty normal, like in the entrance like this, little mistakes, you're fine, like great recovery. Yeah, you just kind of turned and spun off the rock. Didn't, didn't get out of control and regained, regained his position. I like that little slide, slide, you can catch that yeah. slide water behind that little, little feature there. The other thing I'm gonna pause it, and I noticed I really like right now is he's not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people go into rapids and they feel like they have to be doing things, but he's being very calm and just kind of taking his time, getting position, not in any rush. Well, like Zach, most of the people that we've watched so far, they've been, they've been pretty, like, they haven't looked too aggro with their strokes. They've been looking pretty normal. Yep. Yep. So good. He's going for the push. You know, basically, those are. Can you pause it? Pause it. Yeah, right there. So the way I talk about this one is there's all these lateral waves. So, and drift boaters call them 45s, which is also a good way to think of them. He's, there's, there's a V here, and he has to push through the lateral waves. And so he's, going straight up against them and using his tracking to kind of power through them. Yeah. And one of the other things I like with him too, is he doesn't have the oars pointing at his body. He's keeping those oars out in front of him, particularly that downstream oar in the shallows up above. You see like he's rowing with his oars out front and pushing with his shoulders so that if he does catch an oar, it's not going to hit him. It's just going to yeah. stay in front of him. And he's doing nice shallow strokes. He's not getting super deep in there. So yeah, it's pretty long. So hopefully he keeps, breaking these laterals at that angle oh, yeah, that nice. and i mean this is a beautiful eddy catch look at that it's almost almost effortless to catch that eddy by pushing if your timing's right so this is a little saber tooth an air saber tooth cat this thing is a play toy look at that. and she's sitting a little high the, the the configuration on this wasn't awesome i mean we're, she's doing the best she can but that she's sitting a bit high so her Oars are down at her knees right now, which is oh, challenging. Yeah. Let's just take time, slowing down. Yep. And this boat's going to get tossed around a lot, I'm, I'm thinking, because it's so small. She's doing the same thing the, for the conservative, just pull. Just keep pulling. And the, she's fighting the tracking, but she's going to mm -hmm. slowly make progress to the right and then be pointed towards the wall as Whoa. she gets close to it. Well, that's the thing with the, with the cats, too. If you get one good pull on a wave at the right way, it'll surf you across it like your kayak or something. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Yep. Oh. And this is a much bigger cat. This is a, I think this is like a 14 foot high side. That looks pretty scary. So, this is kind of a broken power through a lot of different things. I just want to pause it to point out the log on the lower right uh, that we've been working hard to avoid. Really hard to see from the scout. Actually, it's something it's so it's so underwater, it's not noticeable from the scout, but pretty dangerous actually. Okay. So it looks like he's gonna try to push this move. Same thing. If he keeps this angle, that angle keeps breaking through the laterals, he should be good, right? Yeah, I even I didn't want to I think maybe even get that, that right tube a little farther down because you know your your right tube is gonna get into the slower water first and then you're gonna get spun off. You know what I mean? Like like particularly with the cat, the cat way more than the wrap, you're gonna get spun off. And you've got to really drive it with a lot of downstream angle into the eddy. Even more, I feel like more than you need with, with the wrap. 
Let's see. So instead of breaking laterals at 90, like 90 degrees up to lateral, maybe like 110, 110, 120 degrees. You like just more. Turn, it yet, turn a little far. Yeah, from where he is right now, just turn that a little farther. Have his nose point a little farther downstream. Downstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happens oh, here. Oh, well, that's a more, that was more of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he got really and so off. right here, he's going to try to point the boat at the wall. Again, you, you don't want to hit it at an angle. You don't want to hit it sideways. You definitely want to hit the wall with the bow of your boat if you can. Oh, and he gets caught in this little room of doom over here. So, Aaron, there's there's vertical wall over there. Pretty much nobody's going to help him out. The thing I love right now is there's that red boat over there is like great position to provide some sort of safety if he swims or has an issue. What would, should you he be would you rather? Would you like the red boat there? Would you rather have the red boat farther down? Like I don't know if there's any water down lower, but if he swims, he's going to be downstream with that that, that cat. So the cat would yeah. probably, he can probably catch him. Huh? It looks like he can probably catch him. Boat. There's that big eddy on the left right there, but then there's another rapid right away. So if I'm in that, if he swims now and I'm in that red cat, I just immediately get on the current. The timing is key, right? You can't just swim and wait for him to go by and then row out. You got to like go out and get in front of him that, so you're floating in front of him. But there's yeah, a rapid think, just downstream. Yeah, I think you, you might, it'd be pretty easy to be chasing someone right there. So, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. You can yeah, that looks like good, a. Yeah, that's a tough spot though where he is right now. Especially he can't use his left oar much, and like yeah. you kind of want to. I don't. I'd, I'd like to be able to spin and point my nose and then pull off and just surf across there, or go up to the top and just reset. Probably the best at this point. Yeah. Go to the top of the eddy. I I think the one thing I'm thinking right now. And I'm curious what you think, Aaron. Is like how stressed should I be? Am I, I in my mind? I'm like, you know what? It doesn't feel like I'm in a terrible position. It's just going to take time and there's no rush to get out of it as long as I'm stable. You know, just take your time, think about it. Uh, what, what do you think, Aaron? What, what would you be yeah. thinking right now? No, I think you're right. Yeah, it does look pretty stable there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to look a little messy. Pull a couple of my right oar there and maybe just pull myself into that eddy to just, just to regroup a little more, just to get to a little calmer spot to regroup, get my angle I want, figure out where I want to go and what I want to do next. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be left or it's difficult for me. I'm really having to look at that. Yeah. And he could flip here pretty easily if he's, if he goes forward. If, yeah, look at that. that. It wants to flip if he gets too close to all that current on the wall. Yeah. You really want your bow pointed towards the wall if you can. There he goes. He's pulling himself in. Look at that. Right look at his like, tube is trying, is trying to put water over that tube. And as soon as that tube goes underwater, that cat flips pretty quick. Yeah. He's like he's in a cat in the room. He's kind of high setting, it looks like. Yeah, that's challenging because you're like, you want to stay where you can row, but then the high setting you got to row. There we go. That's the angle. That's it. Yeah, that's, that was it. Yeah. So another raft. This is, I think this is a 14 foot a Hypalon NRS boat. Yeah, I think through stuff like this, I, I think rowing a raft is easier. We're, I mean, we're actually, me. I mean, we're actually finding people learn more from rafts. Oh, really? You know, yeah, like we're finding that the cats, if you just know nothing, they're better because they're more forgiving. But you actually learn faster if you're rowing a, rowing a small raft. I feel like it, it, it responds more consistently. It, it turns well. You can turn it. You can get your angle. Like, yeah, I, I even feel like my row cats this day, like, oh, I put one. One tube goes in a hole or in any other doesn't. I'm just getting, I'm just getting, just floating yeah. around. The problem with the raft though is you can wrap, you can, mm -hmm. you can cause problems the raft when you're learning. So it's, it's a, it's a definitely a trade off. It's a lot heavier for me to the river too. I mean, so let me go back in this one. This just the one thing I noticed we talked about earlier is he's pushing and being active, and there really at this point is no reason to be like trying really hard. Like you're in the calm spot at the top. I'm a fan of like kind of head into it, take your time rest a little bit don't use all of your energy now for because you will need to row downstream what do you think aaron yeah well I mean, yeah that isn't that the whole purpose of rafting is let the river do as much of the work as possible yeah yeah there's no reason to be pushing that much unless he's setting up and so it looks like from here 
he's going to try to push from left to right, which is the move. Start on the left and build momentum towards the right, right? If you start on the right, it's really hard to build momentum from left to right. So he's going to hopefully keep that angle, build momentum, and push through the laterals. Let's see what ends up happening. And now yeah. gave up on that. Well, it, you know. That the momentum thing, I think, is a challenging move a lot of times. That I think the moment you do versus starting early. I, I, in general, I find starting early, starting early is easier. The momentum move yeah. takes a lot more timing. And but, you, but this, but this is early. Like right here, he's starting pretty early on. Like he's right here is where I would start building left to right momentum. His boat, yeah, his his boat just doesn't weigh that much though. It's gonna, you know, waiters are gonna slow it down real quick. It's not gonna keep keep going, and then you've got to get across all that turn. And like, the, there's a wave right down there, and that wave will, you know, the wave in front of them, the right side of it, that's gonna push them back to the left. So, so you're saying that if he had a heavier boat, like a big gear boat, you would start now, push left to right. Yeah, but I think in a lighter. Yeah. Sorry, but in a lighter boat, you're saying, what are you saying to do in a lighter boat? I, I'm more inclined in a lighter boat to make my move early because you can accelerate so quickly. It's a couple strokes. Two to make strokes. your move. Oh, it's, to make your move later, not earlier. I'm saying just like if you're on a V and you think about the V's coming down, mm -hmm. and like people are like, oh, let's start over here and do a big momentum pull. I just, the momentum pull thing, I'm, I just don't see the need for that. I think that's macho in a lot of ways. It's like, oh yeah, you got to pull really hard for a long time. It's like, or you could just start on the right side of the river and do like three pulls, two pulls, two pulls, two pulls, and just kind of stay over there. I mean, sometimes you need to do a momentum move, but it, like, like in this one, like if they just like stop them right there, or, or back, if you go upstream from them, there's that, there's like the, there's the tongue of bar just upstream from them. And then to the right, there's that little pour where they, if you would just, Hit that pour over water until you stop there. Yeah, but, uh, oh, a little upstream there. There's a, you can see the little V to the right where his right oar is just below. Yeah, right there. It's great. If he's over to bo a boat link or even two, he just like, I mean, literally, if he went to the right of that little hole to the right of him, there's a little tongue there. You could go down there and he'd be fine. That's yeah, so I, go early. I see what you're saying. So I think with a light boat, where you're, here's what you're saying right now, he could be 15 feet to the right. And just be pointed yeah. that way and do nice every time he hits a lateral, do nice, easy strokes through the lateral. Yeah. Right? Like he could be yeah. when I say 15 feet, I say like a boat length and a half, maybe two, pretty far right. And he could just tee up to every lateral, push through it, push through it, be good. And but if you're rowing a heavy boat, that's a lot harder to do. You kind of have to build momentum. Well, you have to build momentum. And the other problem here, the other thing here is with that little boat, let's say one of those waves pull surfs them out into the middle a little bit, he can he can like accelerate and change the momentum quickly and get back to the right. If you're in a big heavy boat and you start to, and then you're like, you start to get pushed to the left, oh, that's gonna be a lot harder to turn around and get the momentum of the boat going back the other direction. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, you can accelerate this little boat a lot more quickly. You just kind of keep it over there. So, yeah, I, I like to just, I like hugging, you know, like as close as I can be to shore without hitting rocks that are in and they can go back up. I, I don't know if I like hugging as much. I, I'm a fan of being in the main current and then making a move when you need to. Um, so I like to put my tuck my tail between my legs and I, like it just cuddle up to that shore and just be as close to shore. I mean, there's definitely times for that. I just like, you know, on the shore, that's where there's shallow rocks. That's where there's oh, yeah. logs. So, you know, on the middle fork a few years ago, there was a, a triple wrap, a super high water on the middle fork. Like three, one boat went in and wrapped on a log. And the two came in right next to it, back to back. There was a triple wrap on a log because they were hugging the shore, trying to make catch an eddy on the left above velvet. Where I, we went there a few days before and I was a big fan of, let's stay in the current and then make our, our move into the eddy with some momentum. Instead of well, being, I think that, and I think there, that's a classic of the year. Everyone's running gear boats on the middle floor. It's a, they're heavier boats. And that's, that's a, that, that is a different situation in, in that, in that situation. Yeah. I'd be more, a little more fun to that too. So you have a little bit of momentum to punch into the lady and really get into the lady where I want to go. Yeah. To get a few good strokes. But if I was in a boat with nothing in it, I'd yeah, like yeah, stroke, yeah. you know, but yeah, like, yeah. Your boat with, with like three, three or four guests in there. Yeah. You're going to need to build up some momentum to get in there. But going back to, I mean, I would say if you're going down the rapid, it's kind of nice to be in the middle of the river 
I mean, there's like, there's, there's, there's a few things, <laughs> it's more fun. But yeah. like, if you, if you try to, to break a lateral with, and you need some momentum to do that, sometimes it's hard to build that momentum. And if you how make many, a mistake. Okay, here's the question, Zach. Yeah. In a light boat, how many strokes does it take you to get up to speed? I mean, it's, I can do it pretty quickly. Like because, two I mean, stroke, two strokes? Yeah, but you and I have, like, you have to understand, like, thousands of repetitions on this stuff. But, but, but still, the, the same premise applies. So let's two, three strokes. Like, you get two, three strokes, you can't really get the boat much faster. You can try, but you're not getting much faster. A yeah, gear I mean, boat, I'm, how many strokes does it take a gear boat? Six, eight? It takes a lot longer than a gear yeah. boat to get it up to speed. So but the, I think the difference, though, Aaron, like, you know, I've actually, I mean, I'm trying to stay in shape. I'm a big person. Like I'm physically big just for my genetics. So like I can put, I can get a small boat up to speed very quickly. I can hug the bank, no problem, catch the eddy. But like, as people are learning, if not as strong, or they're just like still trying to figure out how it all works and they don't know how to get supposed to speed too. Like I know, even though when I put two strokes in, I know that speed is coming. When you're yeah. learning, you don't know, you don't know momentum is coming. You're still trying to figure out like, what what the boat's gonna how it's gonna react to your oars but I, I agreed and i think that's another reason to stay closer to shore because i'll say is like gain that <laughs> gain that, that's another reason I, I would say having that timing to be like okay when i get seven strokes i'm gonna be perfect to cut in right behind that rock and catch that eddy versus if i'm really close to it two strokes when i'm new, you newer to it knowing how far i'm gonna go with two strokes is a lot easier for me to measure than six strokes and I'd say the other, and my other thing is like, Zach, yeah, you are a big guy. And that's why I feel like you're more of some momentum because you're one of those big, strong guys. Cause I can't, like, cause I can't, and I'm a, I've like, got the little arms. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta like do, do it the least uh, amount of strength possible. But I can't, I am lucky that I can build momentum. But I think, I think part of the thing about boating, you know, in this case, I think you're right. You can stay on the right side. And if I remember right, Bruce is pretty far to the right. But I think as you do more difficult rapids than this, there's rapids where you have to start left and oh, yeah. move right. No, yeah, definitely. You know what in I mean? That, like, so it, yeah. in terms yeah. of, so this is, so in terms of position, this is the different one, right? This is, he's, he could, he could be more right. According yeah. you know, I, I could definitely be running. We could be running like the edge of this for sure, but he's not having to work that hard because he's already pretty far right. And that wave helps him right there. The way he hits it. Yep. And, yep. Know, so him down and sends him that way up. So that's what you're saying. But I think, also, like we also have to learn how to make seven strokes and catch an eddy from left to right because not every rapid has a right. Totally, totally. I think that's harder though. I guess I feel yeah. like that's a more challenging, uh, yeah, uh, it's more challenging to, to be able to time seven strokes to hit what you want versus, okay, two strokes. And then but, also I just feel like a lot of times we're way too long and then they're lows. You see that too often. You're like, oh, I'm going to do the big momentum move. And you're like, you're like oh, they're, they've missed it before yeah. they even started because like they, they waited yeah. too long or that's or, or the most yeah that's the most common thing i'm seeing when people are learning is they just wait they they don't wait way too long and and so like right here i mean bruce this is my friend bruce who, who's running this boat i mean his timing is really good i would say when people do this most of them are you know 15 feet downstream at this point because they waited too long but that little rock right next to his right that's covered in water you should be pointing for that rock and almost hitting that well, and everybody like, why, why not just go over it with your cat yeah actually straddle. another video another the same group the next another day uh they somebody went right at that rock which yeah. he got he got a little stuck over there i'm like that's amazing i mean that's i was he was he felt bad like he made a mistake and i'm like no you you made the move you made it super early and it was impressive that he was all the way right and Zach, the other thing too is if you're close to shore and only pulling a couple of strokes and you're not pulling too hard into staying close or sort of staying close, or if you hit the wall or you go too early, you, that momentum isn't going to, you, you don't have so much momentum, you're going to get bounced way back out in the middle of the river. You're going to be able to recover that. And how many times do you yeah. see people go a little too early and they hit some rocks and they spin and they're spinning along yeah. the shore? They're usually fine. It's the people yeah. who, you know, who are way out in the middle. That's where I feel like more problems in general yeah. have bigger rapids. So I kind of want to sum this up because we're on tangents. Yeah. And I think this is a big thing for people learning to boat. This is to me a, a critical spot. And this is why it's such a good rapid. You have some choices when you're entering an eddy. One of them is pushing into the eddy, some, usually breaking laterals. Sometimes is 
you know, turning your boat the, you know, the other way, net, like 90 degrees to that and pulling over into the eddy, which isn't as effective, but it's more conservative. And the other, which is a downstream ferry we talked about at the beginning, is turning the boat all the way down and pulling down into it and catching it that way, which takes timing and practice, and you can't always see perfectly where you're going, but it's very strong. And so those are three techniques we use to, use to learn how to catch eddies like this. Or it can be used for running rapids too, but we first learned it in eddies. And, and I think what we're talking about is the struggle of the learning here is trying to get used to catching it as high as possible. Like to make that move, however you do it, whether you start left and, and go to the right by building momentum, or you go down the right side, it's being able to like get your boat to speed with the angle at the right place to break into the eddy. Does that sound, am I break, am I? Yeah, yeah, I think that's, I, I, right? I, yeah. I think those are the, those, yeah, that's a good summary. Cool. Well, Aaron, thanks again for joining me. This has been fun. And um, we, we've got some great feedback from people about these re video reviews. Aaron and I are having fun doing it. And we would almost just do this anyway, the two of us, because uh, it's just like a fun thing to do. And, and, and we we're talking this morning, Aaron mentioned, you know, if any of you have videos of your own out there, you want us to, to give commentary on a review, we would absolutely love it. I mean, this is like the kind of stuff we enjoy doing. So, you know, please, we can't, we can't do commentary on videos that you don't own. I don't think, I don't think you can send us a video of, you know, creature crafts bumping into each other. I don't think it's ethical or legal for us to do random videos, but if you have your own video uh, and you want us to do commentary, it just sounds like fun to us. So we'd be happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know if you, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to check out more videos or if you have questions about, Oh, this happened, what's going on here, or this yeah. situation or that. It'd be really fun to, to see some different, talk about some different rivers and different features yep. and different hydraulics. Yep, yep. I mean, this is what Aaron and I are doing anyway with our time off right now. So like, <laughs> so, so please. Um, yeah, please yeah we'll, watch, we'll watch a few more videos after this is done and just talk about it for fun and I haven't recorded. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. All right, well, thanks everyone. Yeah, you have a good one.